Welcome to season or to ah to the Doc's Office Hours. It's the 14th of December. And I've extended this particular document to cover both Monday and Thursday office hours. So Monday office hours we do for the benefit of those of us in the US West. And uh, Thursday office hours we do for more, more for those in Europe. Okay, and in Africa. All right, so I've got, um, I had a couple of items, action items for the change log progress on pull requests. Uh, LTS release line was a topic I think that we had last time and tutorials on runtime tools. Okay, good topics. Uh, any other topics you'd like to add, Vlad? Um, no, I guess that's it. Okay, all right. Well, then let's let's proceed. So the 2.271 change log is, it, it'll happen today, the release is tomorrow. And so I'll, I'll prep it after this meeting concludes. Uh, it looks like there are a number of, of interesting changes as always in weeklies. So it'll be fun to, to do it. And there's some tooling that supports the creation of that. Then progress on Jenkins.io pull requests. I am proud to say that I've started detailed review of PR3979 scaling Jenkins on Kubernetes. And there are a number of challenges there. So Vlad, this may be one where you can guide me. So uh, running Jenkins in Minikube is complicated, All right? You know, you have to deal with ingress, you have to deal with uh, installation, with uh, what else, with, oh, Docker image repositories. It's all sorts of interesting caching, et cetera. So fascinating. And um, it's, it's documented. I've just got to be sure that I understand all the descriptions and that I've made sure that they work for me. And um, a few changes, a few changes have arrived as part of that review. And we'll keep doing that. Um, more discussion in the Thursday session with Zenob. Now, in terms of Hacktoberfest and other reviews, I've it's been a, a week or two that a week one, it's actually been two or more weeks since last progress. On the long term, long lived pull requests like uh, Jonathan's. Uh, more work during the end of December. We are actually down slightly from the number of open pull requests we had before. So that's a plus. And so right now we've got 29 open with two or three of those, two of those having just arrived within the last 24 hours. So we're, we're down from the 35 that we had reached before, uh, making progress, but more work to be done. Good work. Oh. Any questions on the, the progress there? Actually, this might be one, Vlad, where if you're interested, happy to have others assist, try the Kubernetes examples because they are interestingly complex. Uh, using Minikube, you can run it on a local, local Linux or uh, Mac OS machine. 
And just Mark, uh, just to clarify, as I understand, alternative to Minikube would be to run in um, Kubernetes in the cloud. Some yes, kind of yes, also. Public cloud. Right, that's correct. Can also run the same examples in a public cloud, like, for instance, Amazon's EKS, which is their managed Kubernetes service. Uh, Google's GKE, their managed service, and Azure's AKS. Yeah. And others, for instance, we've actually got a tutorial on uh, IBM Cloud uh, and Oracle Cloud, both have managed services as well. And actually, that's a good one to highlight. Uh, Oracle Cloud has a one month trial with a $300 credit. If you, if you can finish something in a month, uh, they're a great candidate to use that month to explore Kubernetes. I'm, I'm now two, two weeks into mine. Go ahead. And I had, had worked with Oracle for a while. Uh, I mean, Oracle Cloud, are they, are using open GDK or are they using uh, their own GDK? Uh, and if they are using their own GDK, will it be any issues with open source? And so that's a good question. Things? And what I saw when I ran, uh, when I was running um, Mark's VMs on, uh, so I was, I'm running Oracle Linux on um, on Oracle Cloud, and the JDK is Open JDK, not Oracle JDK. Oh, okay, that's good. And I assume that the reason for that is that Oracle Linux is a derivative of Red Hat Enterprise Linux. Hmm. So at least that was what that was what I observed. It seemed to be, as as far as I could tell. That's a, that's a very good question. And we could, we could certainly take a look at it just to be sure. In fact, here, let's do it. There's a nice thing about having a Jenkins server all the time on. Here is OCI Oracle Linux 8B system information says, Okay, system information says what? Open JDK 64-bit server VM. So I'm pretty sure that it is, at least what I'm running is Open JDK based. Now I'm using my own, yeah, I'm definitely using Open JDK because I'm using my own installation of it. Yeah, so, so no, no conflict there with the Oracle license. Mm -hmm. Thank you. Thanks. Okay. All right. Then any other questions or comments on the status of pull requests? Okay. So we had next topic was LTS release line. Vlad, was this a topic you put in or one that we had added that Meg, did you have questions? Uh, no, this is something that I uh, um, submitted just today, and I can clarify what I meant by this. Um, there is LTS release line, which is uh, documented in our documentation, and there is link provided to this on this uh, like header line. Um, mm -hmm. um, and if you click on this like link above that, uh, LTS really? Yeah, exactly. So it documents that LTS is kind of a long-term support stable release, which is released every month. And we have special uh, uh, versioning model, which we use for all these releases. Um, so if we go back to our document, uh, um, 
Uh, there is link below LTS releases. Uh -huh. uh, yes, this one. Uh -huh. And it defines which are stable release uh, in our, uh, like on GitHub. And it says that packaging and there is releases, I guess, somewhere. Um, yeah, stable, stable maybe? releases. Yeah, stable releases. Stable releases is a manually triggered release that happens around once a month. So it duplicates the same kind of uh, statement that it is uh, once a month and it is manually triggered release. At the same time, in our documentation, uh, specifically in download page on Jenkins.io, uh, if we go to download page, uh, mm -hmm. here, download Jenkins uh, 2.2631 LTS on the left, we have Docker, uh, Docker release, which points uh, uh, in the Docker, uh -huh. yes, this one, it points to this uh, Docker hub. And if we go to tags, mm -hmm, yes, to tags uh, and go to the bottom of this page. Um, bottom yeah. of the page, okay. Yeah, and we can see that there are uh, like oh, a little bit up, there are uh, different LTS releases and those LTS releases like 31 minutes ago, 36 minutes ago, and so on. So in spite of the fact that LTS release was well, uh, delivered, uh, I guess we have a blog on that some time ago, it happens uh, like in automatic fashion, I guess, versus what is documented, it happens manually and it happens once a time. So I found it is kind of, uh, inconsistence, I would say here, is LTS release manual happens once per month or is it automatic, especially for Docker, uh, which happens like we can see, uh, um, well, on a regular basis. Uh, mm -hmm. So in automatic fashion. And um, just, I try to understand myself what is right, what is wrong here and uh, should we somewhere point about this in our documentation? Uh, this is like the question is all about and um, yeah. Excellent, very good question. So I'm gonna to try, to, try to phrase it for the notes so mm -hmm. that, okay, so it is that the Jenkins LTS release is delivered once a month and the build is started Interactively, manually, right? Interactively mm -hmm. uh, by people with the right permissions. Mm -hmm. I happen to be one of those actually, so that's good. Okay, um, however, the Docker image is generated on a different schedule. And I'm gonna be a little more precise here. The Jenkins LTS release, what that delivers, it delivers Jenkins.war, Jenkins MSI, MSI for Windows, whoops. Deb file for Debian and Ubuntu. And RPM file for Red Hat, uh, Red Hat Enterprise Linux, uh, Oracle Linux, uh, Scientific, oh, CentOS, Scientific Linux, etc. And an RPM file for for SUSE Linux and OpenSUSE. Notice I didn't say anywhere that that process delivers the Docker image. And, and that's the Docker image is in fact generated on a different schedule, 
the Docker image build process runs uh, periodically. And I think it's uh, roughly every four hours. And when a new release is detected, or there is a change in the base image, operating system image, a new version may be pushed. Mm -hmm. So because, because the Docker image bundles an entire operating system image, oops, hang on, OS image, it needs more frequent updates. At least I think that's the, the purpose behind what we're seeing. The other is there's some history here where Docker, Docker image construction was done uh, much, much more frequently and much more rapidly iterated than LTS releases of Jenkins were. Mm -hmm. So, but now what this really means is when we release a new weekly or a new LTS, builder, for example, let's see, is EG the correct thing to use here? Yes. Okay. Um, Exemplus gratis. Oh, uh, good. The Latin. That's just what I need. Okay. That's excellent. Okay. So Mark uh, usually runs the Docker build process interactively just to assure that we get it to assure it arrives promptly. Mm -hmm. But really it's worth considering, we probably ought to couple the start of the Docker build process with the end and completion of the Jenkins LTS release of the war file, because that's what's needed. We could launch Docker build after the war file is after Jenkins that war is released. That's all that's required to build those Docker images. Mm -hmm. Did that answer your question? Uh, yes, well, thank you very much, Mark, for clarifying. Absolutely, it's wonderful explanation. What is the difference? Like how uh, Docker LTS releases uh, fits into general LTS releases scheme. Uh, and um, like one of the sequential questions that I have is, does it make sense to use Docker L, uh, Jenkins Docker LTS versus Jenkins Docker weekly releases since LTS releases? I mean, um, are Jenkins are uh, Jenkins Docker LTS releases more stable than Jenkins weekly releases? Um, if I, I'm not sure if this question makes sense, but just I think it's a good. I, yeah, I, I think, think it's, it's a good, good question. Okay, so I think you're asking: Are Jenkins LTS Docker image releases more stable than Jenkins weekly? Exactly. Right. Mm -hmm. yeah. So, because and that I. That when you mean then. Sorry. Ah, very good. And I think I think I can confidently assert they are because the the base Jenkins code in the Docker Weekly uh, changes every week. The base Jenkins code in Docker LTS changes every four weeks. So that, that so the weekly, for instance, right now is 2.270 will be 2.271 tomorrow. Mm -hmm. And right now we're at 2.263.1. We'll switch to 2.263.2 .2 in mid-January. Mm 
Mm-hmm. And all these regular uh, uploads of uh, Jenkins Docker LTS releases are basically patches on the top of our uh, base image, base LTS image. Right, right. So the way the way a, a Jenkins LTS is constructed is by adding a relatively small number of so the. 2.263.2, its release candidate is being developed right now. The proposed pull request has been submitted by Tim Jacome, the release officer. And in that pull request, he proposed a set of five or as maybe as many as eight or nine changes that he thinks should be brought in from other streams into 263.2. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Okay. So, yeah. So it explains why we cannot appoint when we're talking about Jenkins Docker LTS releases to specific file because it change very changes very frequently. We can point only to some location or folder directory on uh, Docker Hub where all these LTS releases are located. Right. That's right. Yep. Mm-hmm. Now, are security fixes ever applied directly to the Docker images, or do those come in, they get done to the weekly Jenkins, and then go to Docker through that path? So, so it, it depends. That's a, that's, a, that's, a good, that's a good segue. So let's go over. So Jenkins security releases are applied to Jenkins.war, and then into the packages, including, and the Docker image. Okay. But, so th- that's that's one angle. The other though is operating system security fixes. For instance, we had a, a complaint from users about three months ago that um, Alpine 3.9 was no longer receiving security fixes. Alpine is an operating system on Docker. Okay. And so the Docker image, so the Docker image based on Alpine 3.9 um, was outdated for operating system security fixes because they'd stop patching it. Because ah. the Docker, pro- the Alpine project stopped patching it, applying security fixes. And so what we did then is um, the Jenkins project, thankfully Oleg Ninashev, uh, upgraded from Alpine 3.9 as, the oper- as an operating system base to Alpine 3.12. And we will do something similar will do something similar and in a much larger to a much larger group of users uh, when we drop support for for the for Debian 9 and replace it with Debian 10 and that's because Debian 9 is already outside of their normal support, and it will cease to be supported absolutely with the release of Debian 11 in 2021. Okay, and where's Ubuntu like 14 is about to be deprecated, isn't it? Oh yeah, we've, and we've, we don't deliver in any Ubuntu images at all okay, right so now. So not an issue there and, and no threat because by now we're all on 18 or 20. Right. So if we were delivering, it would already be 18 based. And when you say Jenkins security releases, that includes plugins, right? Uh, well, so the the war file does not include not any include plugins. plugins. Right. 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 So, so um, Jenkins core, let's do it that way. Yeah. Plugin security releases are independent of Jenkins core releases. And 
plugins that are part of the recommended are treated the same as all the others, right? Correct. Good point. Okay. Yes. So, uh, so that's the, let's see, what do we call it? The setup wizard recommended plugins are treated for security purposes same as any other plugin. Now there is a there are some some noteworthy exceptions. There are noteworthy maybe process things that you it's good to be aware of. When a plugin is removed from distribution, for example, um, detected that it's not open source. Uh, and the example there is the TFS plugin we discovered was dependent on components that are not open source. Uh -huh. and therefore, the Jenkins project stopped distributing it. When it's removed from distribution, if it is in the setup wizard, we remove it from the setup wizard. Okay. And just a small uh, clarification. Does it mean that any plugin which has CloudBees inside its name should be removed from distribution as well because it is not open source or it's not necessary in the case? Good, good question. No. So, so the, the fact that it was created by a company does not make it closed source. In this case, the TFS plugin was, was in fact created by Microsoft. The problem was that one of the components that they depended on is closed source. So good question. Are there CloudBees plugins in the Jenkins Update Center that are closed source? And as far as I know, there are no. <coughs> All the CloudBees plugins that are in the Update Center are open source. God, Mark, this is a brilliant write up. Mm -hmm. We should put this into the doc, shouldn't we? All right. <laughs> now that you just sat here and wrote it. Well, I, the, yeah, and, and I just don't know where we would put this kind of thing because this, this is sort of a portion of this is describing the release process, right? And release processes right. change. And right. release processes are mostly relevant to people who run the release processes. So, so we document them in, in the in the release, this, the repository that has release scripts more than we document them on Jenkins.io. Yeah, but I can see some uh, somebody who's looking for cutting edge, brand new feature and waiting for it to show up in mm -hmm. LTS and Docker. Right, right, being perplexed. Where, where's my feature? Why didn't it arrive yet? Yeah. yeah. In and the worst actually... case, we could put this in a readme. I'd, I'd like to see it in the doc per se, but it could be in a readme for something at the top yeah and i, th I think it actually is in yeah. i could i think all the things that i've shared here are already in readme's okay. in various repositories i'm just presenting some but sort not of assembly. put together yeah okay, right that's correctly nice. this all this is doing is creating an assembly yeah and i guess this this wonderful write-up which mark created uh, defines the process and in our documentation we're not much talking about the processes we're talking right. more about how well tools and uh, mm -hmm. um, yeah okay. yeah and and that's a good point vlad it's the process documentation we generally put other places because the outcome based documentation the results documentation is we think mostly what the users want they want to know where do they find an LTS? How do they know what changed in the LTS? There, to them, it's largely and don't care how we created the LTS. They they trust us, and we've got. Though I guess this one is a good one and a good example of this is very much a process document. The mm -hmm. LTS release line page is very much process description. Mm -hmm. All right. So it, we're not without precedent. If we want to put process description in, we certainly can. Mm -hmm. So 
any other questions with regard to to LTS release line and Docker LTS releases? So what's the summary is that the new Docker image for an LTS is available, what, within 24 hours, can one safely say? Oh, oh, it's what much shorter lag? than that. Yeah, uh, so yeah. new new Docker All image for a release is available within four hours of release of Jenkins.war delivery. Now that's assuming that there are no I was allowing for the possibility that there was a problem and they had to rebuild or something like that. Yeah, it, and, and if, if that kind of thing happens, it could be, well, let's see, the example there is, there've been times when the MSI for a build was delayed by two weeks while we worked on a problem. Ah. So, so the thing that, the thing that we, we don't hardly ever delay is the delivery of the war file. Okay. The other components, the, their delivery can be jeopardized by code signing for Windows or GPG keys needed for the Debian package or et cetera. Right. Which is also, to me, that's worth saying too, though, is that. So every new Docker, Jenkins Docker release is triggered by uh, authorized people like, like you, Mark, and by automatically by the programs, is it correct? I, actually, or... it's, it's dominated, Docker image generation by default is on a clock. Mm -hmm. Schedule. It's on a, on a schedule, right, exactly. Mm -hmm. And Jenkins weekly releases are actually on a schedule. Mm -hmm. They happen every Tuesday and mm -hmm. uh, yeah, so. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Wonderful, thank you. Excellent. Good, any other questions on the, the Docker and LTS topics? Okay, next topic then, tutorials on runtime tools. So Vlad, help me understand what, quick, give me some examples of runtime tools in this question. Uh, well, we're using inside, uh, actually uh, inside our documentation when describing how to create a uh, um, Docker, inst uh, Jenkins Docker installation, we're using, um, plugin installation manager as the tool uh, to build our customized Docker, uh, Docker release. And this plugin installation manager, it, uh, I guess, um, fits into category of the tools, not plugins. It's the tool which manages installing plugins and so on. Uh, and we have the section in our documentation describing tools, but there is no description for this tool, um, plugin installation manager. Should we include, uh, should it be hosted on Jenkins.io tutorial on how to use this tool? Because it is, um, well, I guess, kind of complex tool, valuable tool. And there are a lot of different options how to use it. Should we describe it inside and host on Jenkins.io or at least point how? Because we're referencing this tool and uh, people who are using this, well, they may want to find out how to use it or uh, should they rely on their own kind of uh, um, understanding on documentation or on CLI documentation and so on. This is that's that's a very good question. So let's let's take a look at that because certainly there are lots of people who come to the come to the documentation site, come to Jenkins.io looking for information about how to install and upgrade and maintain their plugins. Yeah, good. So now let me, I'm gonna bring, bring a question back to you as to 
what's a what do we think would be a reasonable place to put it so right now we've got the tutorials mm -hmm. that have in them this using build tools section and it talks about compilation tools build tools would we put a, a plugin installation manager tools tutorial here in more tutorials maybe we put it someplace else because i think you've got a great idea to, to show people if you need to install plugins here are your choices right so it is more about not build tools but runtime tools when uh, we're management. ready system or management, management. Yeah, yeah, it, I don't know what it might be talking. called configuration management or system management yeah those i i think they're distinct because they're not used to compile code. They're not used to, to construct product. Right. They're, they, but they are intensely valuable to achieve the goals you want with the thing that you're using your build tools for. Mm -hmm. I could, what a, I can see some other subjects that could use tutorials like CLI. Ah, oh, good, we good, all, yes. We, you know, we talk about a feature from the UI and then we say, you can do this with CLI and maybe we give them a list of the commands, but, but we don't go, you know, there's a lot, some of those commands are, you know, abandon hope all who enter here and others are very nice, useful, you know, and we have no place to real where that's ever really documented or just something, you know, some sample scripts and, and then I wrote this beautiful sample script and now I can't run it because I don't have the permissions or, or it's waiting for, you know, the, the system God to give me permissions or, you know, something that puts together all those pieces. Yeah. And those, uh, the, those, I think that's a very good insight. The, if we had something for the Jenkins command line interface as a tutorial. So how do you use the, how do you use the tutorial? How do you use the CLI with the CLI jar file with SSH connections with WebSocket? I mean, there, there are some cool things there. Likewise, the rest API. Yeah. Good. Now, Vlad, you had, you had started the question with, should we have a tutorial that describes the plugin installation manager? Do you have, do you want to go further with that? Are there structural questions that you would ask or? Uh, yeah, well, this is um, about where should, well, first question is, should we, uh, should yeah, the we answer is them yes. on Jenkins.io? And another question is where, where we should put it on the more tutorials or on the management, or maybe okay. we can refer to just a readme file on our plugin installation manager, which is basically a very good tutorial on how to use it. Um, but like we can put it anywhere on this link. Yeah. Um, does Jcask support plugins yet? Or is that only uh, a cloud-based cask? Depends on what you mean. So yes, it, it will use the plugins and it will it will configure plugins very readily from inside Jcask. Is that what you were asking? Right. So so that's so for plugin man, I've got the the UI that I can use for plugin management. I can write groovy scripts to manage the configuration of my plugins, right? And now I've got Jcask. Right, right. So, you know, so I've, I've got multiple ways to manage my plugins and each of them have pros and cons, obviously. Yeah, I, I think given the list, I wonder if isn't is this suggesting that what we ought to consider is just like we have a using build tools, should we have a system administration tutorials or a system yes. configuration tutorials? Because it's not really for me, it's there are enough topics we identified with just a little bit of thought that it's it's much broader and much more specific than more tutorials. It's right. really should we should we have the concept of system administration tutorials? Yes, yes, and plugin installation manager needs to be in there. <laughs> yeah. So and and their administration tutorials. It's 
Yeah, the, uh, any one of these seem, certainly this one, for example, Jenkins Job DSL, I don't understand how to use it and I'm aching to learn how to use it. So this one, that one, configuration code, I'm very comfortable with. I've used it a lot and love it. So, so yeah. <laughs> each of these has, has compelling value in certain portions of the Jenkins use experience. And I guess Mark will also need to address the question about the difference between tutorial and just general chapter in our documentation, because for mm. system administration, we have, uh, I guess, chapter it is called the right word, maybe not in right. our well, Jenkins documentation. Yeah, in uh, fact, and good if, point. Right. Oh, go ahead. <laughs> no, well, uh, I guess we need maybe for ourselves to clarify what is the difference between user handbook and tutorial, and is there any difference? Well, and, and maybe to go even one step further, Vlad, is the, is the concept of a tutorial premature if we don't yet have a section in the handbook on that topic? Right, is it, is it upside down for us to consider, let's create a CLI tutorial when we, we don't yet, or even better, CLI REST API, a REST API tutorial when we don't yet have a good tutorial in the developer docs or elsewhere, or not a good, a good reference set for, for that topic. So managing plugins feels like a great topic for managing Jenkins, doesn't it? And, and we've got a page and it's, I'm pretty sure, woefully inadequate, right? I mean, the, the many different ways that you can manage <laughs> plugins, shouldn't plugin installation manager be here first as reference material. And then once we've filled in the reference material, then we do a tutorial. Well, but there's, there's another way to slice it too, is that the user guide right now, there's it's sort of targeted towards the new user of getting up and being successful quickly. And a lot of this stuff is power user stuff. And it seems like we've had a back, you know, a back assumption that the people who do this power stuff are going to be powerful people and they'll figure it out, which is not necessarily, which means I think that a lot of people are missing out on a lot of really good functionality or they're finding out about it only in you know, side places, but like, I don't see the user guide as being reference material, I guess. I would love to see oh, the okay. reference material. See, and, and I, I do view it as reference material, particularly for things like like this one, where this is this long list of- That is reference, yes. Detailed reference material. And, and likewise, the managing security page for as much as it is, 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 is very much reference style material. That, now, that they're all mixed up. It's and let's say the some of the material could be reference material. To me, it's not a convenient format. I mean, I, of course, I come too many years in Unix where you had a guide and then you had the man pages, and the man pages were your reference material. And right, and and th once this you is knew this... what you were doing, that's all you looked at. But here, you you've got to constantly slog through all the pros right. and all the, the... hand holding to get to the reference material. Yeah, th this is decidedly not that not Unix man page style reference material. You're certainly correct. It's there's right. an awful lot of pros there. Yeah. But it's, you know, I would almost, I would like the user guide to almost be more tutorial. You know, this is an example of how you use it and then go here to find all of the, all the CLI commands, all the syntax or whatever, and have that broken out into separate reference material. Um, that even if it's not man pages, you know, be it separated. Because that also, if I'm trying to get the basic big picture, then having all the details of every last little jot, twiddle, and option is intrusive on that. The two, either one, it's not right for anybody. Mm, good point. Yeah. Grab some quick, I'm going to copy some quick hyperlinks into this document. Okay, tutorials. So instead of more tutorials, we would add. Okay. Oops. 
and then okay other top you've got a bullet list of other topics which still doesn't have plug-in installation manager in it but those should be under the administration tutorials right oh uh -huh. right i think so yeah i think that's the i think what we've really said here is here are th here are topics we already know would be interesting for people and then the question is, do we already have places for, for these? And I think we do for this one, or at least for several of these, we could identify which section they might logically add, be added to as reference material. Because if I look at this one, for instance, Jenkins CLI is, there's reference material for it and Now let's see the other plugin installation manager really belongs in managing plugins. I think. And go ahead, Meg. I'm toying with the idea that we're still that what we really need to do is re-architect. I re-architect the administration documentation. That some of what there, well, I see it there. There's there's tutorial. Generally, I think of tutorials as getting started for for novice users. Exactly. Um, but then there's another level of guide. Let's call it guide type information for power users or people who are trying to become power users. And they're separate. Um, and there is the question of the fact that we have the reference and the guide all jumbled together and inconsistently, I mean, from section to section and topic to topic. Um, it's just, it's all, it's kind of, a, what's there is kind of a mess. And I, okay, here's a question. What is the difference between a tutorial and guide material? I think I might know, but I'm not sure, but. Well, so for me, tutorials are step by step, whereas the handbook content is so the tutorials talk, take us through a step at a time, do this, do this, do this, whereas the the handbook material takes us through concepts like here are here's what shared libraries are in pipeline. Here's how you deal with branches and pull requests. Right now, is that is that a. a precise distinction not really no um yeah i know it when i see it sort of thing um but that's to me i'm thinking and i'm in a by memory go back to the um to the managing plugin section that we had to me that's a little bit of step by step you got a brief introduction but then here's how you install yeah. the plugin that's sure. almost a tutorial maybe it could be written better And then here's how you do it from the web UI. If this were a tutorial, how would this be different? Yeah, I, I, I would think if it were, if we were trying to do a tutorial with this, we would likely start with a problem statement and take the user through how, we, how this tutorial will solve their problem. So the problem statement might be, I want to use Blue Ocean. Or it might be, I want to use Blue Ocean and I want to use Declarative Pipeline or some story like that. And then we would, the tutorial would solve that, that, that hypothetical problem we've presented to them. Is that a complicated enough thing? I mean, so you end up potentially with a tutorial for, I want to use Git um, or right. I want to use, is that worth all of those tutorials? I mean, do, do things change or aren't the things you do to manage plugins pretty much the same for all of the plugins? Am I missing something? No, I think, I think plugin management in general has an awful lot of the same things um, going on, right? Choose, 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 find the plugin you need, install it, uh, monitor to see when it's upgraded, 
select if you'll choose if you'll upgrade it, perform the upgrade, restart, and use it. Right. And besides that, tutorials may use some specific software tool, <laughs> tutorial about tools may use some tool, which are dedicated to tutorials. For instance, we are talking about Katakoda tool, which is tool specifically for writing tutorials. So uh, right. that's another difference, I guess. Mm. Uh, yeah. Um, but yeah, and I'm, I'm struggling with this too. That's what I'm, it's like, is there a reason why I can't, when we're talking about web UI, why we can't fly up a Katakona instance right from the dock? Yeah, I've, I've, other than funding, no, there isn't a reason, but funding is the reason. Right, but, but the funding would be the same whether it's a separate tutorial or in the docs, right? Yeah, yeah. I mean, in, in either case, if we embed the tutorial inside the handbook, it's or embed a link to Katakoda inside the handbook so that they could launch it, it will, it will have the same challenge either place, sure. Right. So that's what I, it's like, it's almost some toying with the idea that we need to go back and say, what does, every, what are the pieces that everybody needs to know about, in, about managing plugins? And then what do we put where and how do we form it? And, you know, does this, you know, to some extent that seems like sort of a simple topic, but to now from going here, where am I told that you can install, you can use Jcast to install plugin, install and manage plugins. You can do it from scripts. That's not here, right, at all? It isn't, right. And so this, for me, this is missing so where, where, is it where it describes two techniques to install plugins, there are at least two or three others, mm -hmm. right? There's, um, I can install plugins with plugin installation manager tool. I can install plugins with the deprecated install-plugins.sh script, yeah. Which if it's deprecated, we don't need to document, but you know what I'm saying mm -hmm. is like, and then I just shudder, this looks huge. Uh, just an idea which came from the top of my head, one of the difference, maybe a similar to difference between freestyle job and pipeline, uh, where how to guides and handbook is just the forest of different trees and user is on, uh, on its own to select like specific path, while tutorial is very specific path to do this, this, mm -hmm. this like uh uh so this is the way to master your uh, uh, uh your skills and in jenkins for instance or specific uh, right. aspect of jenkins yeah, right. i like that i like that analogy i think that analogy makes sense so navigating tutorial would be easier for novice users than like going to handbook and just Right. What to say first? Yeah, it's like I mean, I mean, I can also see like a lot of what's here going away, and you sort of say you can manage them. These, you know, theoretically, if we had all this stuff, this could be a fairly short. What are plugins, and what do you mean by managing them? That you've got to install them, and you've got to configure them, and you've got to upgrade, you know, and some general stuff. And then it's like go here for a tutorial on how to install and manage plugins from the UI. Go here for a tutorial on how to do it with JCASC. Go here for the tutorial on how to do that for CLI, mm -hmm. which would be separate from, there would be a general CLI tutorial that you, you know, you need to understand CLI. So, but yeah, but it could, it could mean actually that the user guide gets pared way down because things that are more appropriately tutorials are tutorials that are referenced. Uh, right, right. So maybe, in this handbook, we have general uh, education or uh, like reference information or whatever about all different topics, really, really, really forest. And if you want to use specific environment, specific configuration tool, specific things, here is the link to this tutorial, right. how to use, uh, yeah. Yeah. 
just but it is there's a lot of i'm seeing like script console and groovy hook scripts which i haven't looked at for a while but there's a lot of subjects that are out there that but there isn't something that sort of puts it together does that make sense give you the big picture to know what all this is mm. right um so would that be in something like the configuring the system page the entry entry page to it is give a high level view of here are your choices does that need to be some sort of a, something completely different a video series or a, a some sort of hints i think there's probably many paths what we lack is sort of an architecture about how we're doing this each piece you know got written by somebody who with some competence has got some information you know and maybe that maybe if there were a single issue yeah it's that it's hard to see the big picture we've we've i think we're better at documenting trees than we are the forest right but if you don't understand the forest it's really hard to understand the trees and make the most out of the system mm -hmm. so that that's what i'm saying it's like there's an argument, I'm talking to Tammy way too often these days, you might notice, but there's an argument for an information architecture of what, <laughs> how do we do this? And because, well, another thing that we didn't, there are things like in this case, I'm not actually sure that the Catacota, if, you know, given that it's gonna have be an expense that we can't do for everything, do I really benefit by being able to do a lab for this? Or would a demo work just as well if I had a good demo that walked me through the steps and mm. I had text that you know went with it and told, so I could go back exactly what were those steps. Um, there are some things that are so complicated you know, where you've got four or five different things that are all coming together where a tutorial, where an actual tutorial where they have to go into Catacoda and do it themselves would be very valuable. But I think they're, you know, there's something of level of difficulty of the task that affect should affect it, but. And actually, Meg, you like uh, raised a very good point about labs in general, because I noticed that CloudBees, they have labs kind of uh, uh, section, which allow users to like, um, yeah, uh, train themselves and just execute different sessions on the labs. And I'm not sure, but I guess we don't have specific labs. Uh, uh, maybe I'm wrong, but. Right, the closest thing I think of to specific labs are the Docker install instructions, for instance, which is, is precise steps, do these things and it will work, but it's, it's quite rare that that kind of thing exists, right? It's just right. in the Docker image and Docker example here. And that's a complicated enough case there that Catacoda would be very nice to have. Right. Or something, but I get, I mean, I've, you know, I've hit this in another context, but what's striking me is a ways back a time that I remember well, you guys are old enough to remember it well too. It was very clear. Documentation was the set of books that arrived on a big truck in a whole bunch of boxes. And that was documentation. And training was what you got when you reserved a slot and you went away for a week to someplace and a person walked into the room and led you through all this stuff and you had the conversations and you listened to the lecture and you did the labs and that was training. I'm not sure that, I mean, those, there's, everything's merging together because everything is remote and online and I don't buy books anymore. Um, and what does it mean that I'm going to take, I'm going to go over and take this training module or I'm going to take a tutorial or, you know, that, that all, we're sort of trying to play with old categories that are no longer relevant, but I don't know how far to go in merging them. Do we just say it's one information set that, uh, not sure. Yeah, me neither. It's a, it's a good question. What? Worth, worth further discussions, further conversations to decide. Well, what, whatever it is, what we aren't going to we aren't going to throw out everything, and we're we're not going to have a revolution. Whatever we do, we're going to have to start moving towards it incrementally, and picking right. the areas that are the most egregious difficulties right now, and pulling those out and rearchitecting them. Mm -hmm. But it would be nice if we started working towards some sort of common definition or something of the. And I don't know. You know, it's it's something that doesn't exist because. 
but, but well, as the starting point, I can just try to create yes. a pull request for our installation manager tutorial and put it mm -hmm. somewhere. Uh, but sure. I had some trouble actually uh, running the tests on my Mac, and I figured out that well, it was the version of Maven because you know, like I was able to do this using Google uh, Cloud Shell where was the latest Maven version, but on my Mac, it was not the latest, but version 3.5 something. And with this previous version of Maven, there were some errors as well. So, yeah. Has the plugin manager documentation been updated for the new user interface? I didn't even notice when we were looking at that. Uh, there really isn't anything to update there. Oh, you mean in terms of- Well, we've got screenshots and we used to get the the laundry list and now it's just you know the favoring search over the laundry list uh yeah and i thought well that's a good question i don't know if if the screenshots have been updated or not let's take a look and see it's easy to tell has not been because this is the yes. old the old yeah. interface uh the others okay there's one that has but in general uh, it looks like, no, the screenshots have not been updated. Okay. And even a mention that there was a big change in the user interface for people, you know? Right. That, that went out in a blog post, but not right. in a, but not, has not been reflected in the documentation. You're correct. Right. Yeah. So the documentation sort of needs a rewrite for the new, well, and the hint of, I forget what it is, but there's something you, if you want the laundry list, there's a search you can put in that will basically give you a list of everything. I forget what it was, it was something trivial, but. Um, so, so it's actually, if, if Vlad wants it, that, and he could in the process of that, re-architect what's in the user guide and what's in the tutorial. Right? No. Thanks. Yeah, Thanks for idea. Yeah, I will. <laughs> one, one pull request at a time. Yep. Yes. Yes. Is that what so, you wanted to do, Vlad? I'm, I'm, you like the way I just say, oh, Vlad can go do this. <laughs> well, yeah. Start so we, we say, yeah, what well, the problem you broke up is the tip of the iceberg of a bigger problem, but it is a real one. Is that something you want to do? Right. Mm -hmm. And, and, I think it's a fair thing to say, okay, we need to be sure we got reference material. And I think an admin, an administration tutorial section in the tutorials page would probably be well received. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. All right. So yeah. we have we have crossed our one hour time. Uh, I I had one more item, which is relatively urgent. Calendar for the next few weeks. Ah. Uh, so December 21, 2020 is Mark's wedding anniversary. Oh, oh Mazel tov. Yeah. Grazie mille. <laughs> so, <laughs> so I will I will probably not attend this session because the lady that has put up with me for all these years deserves my full attention on that day. <laughs> I, what I've seen of, of Corinne is she deserves that attention even if she hadn't put up with you for all these years too. exactly you married very well Mark I, I she, did I married far beyond what I deserve Absolutely. no I think she I think she married well too so it's a nice it's a good couple yeah now December 28th I'm back available we could we can meet December 28th most most of the of my colleagues uh, at the, in a, in the company will be off, and I'll be off. But I'm happy to talk office hours anyway. So, would you like to meet? Um, do we want to meet the 21st? I propose to cancel, but I'm okay with meeting the 28th. Are you interested in meeting the 28th? I'm okay with the 28th, but um, are you taking time off, Vlad? Um. I hadn't decided yet, but uh, I can meet, uh, I guess, uh, as well for December 28th. Okay, great. I certainly can. I don't know. I mean, I don't know that I'm contributing anything anyhow, but 
That's why they're, Vlad's doing all this work. <laughs> the last attempt to, well, contribute during this wonderful year. Oh, yes. Okay, so let's let's declare it for for clarity. We will meet on the twenty eighth, and we'll meet on January four. Okay, fair enough. Sounds good to me. Let's see. Now, wait a second. I've got it. Yes, that will work. Good. Okay, I've got I've got a, a personal event January seventh. I'll be out all day, so I I'll let let everybody know when that time comes. Great. Anything else we need to discuss here today? Interesting can of worms, Vlad. Thank you, I think. <laughs> well, thank you very much for you know, sharing all this information. All right. Thanks, everybody. Have a great yeah. have a great day and thanks. Thanks again. Yes, and have a great anniversary then. Yes, I will I will wish the wonderful lady that, that has put up with me all these years a happy anniversary. Absolutely. What are you what are you doing in this COVID crazed world? Are you cooking for her? I have no idea yet. I've got to think about that. The most crucial thing is the day prior will be our large, our family gathering, where we get all the the grandkids that live in Colorado together for for fun time. And so, Ooh, and yes, you can, and you're going to do that. We we are. We 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 know we're all COVID, not non COVID positive, and we are going to very boldly do that because we we like getting together and even the even the son-in-law with leukemia is likely to be there and just rejoice with us. Absolutely. Oh, cool. We, we you, just you can't always, miss it. You always did dinner theater. Did. And that is, that is dead now. Right. I mean, that's, right. Actually, that's not, I want, um, the Boston pops Christmas concert is uh, available for $30. Um, any team between December 10th and I think January 9th. Yeah, there's probably, there's some other stuff. There's like, things like that that are paid online you could have a some sort of theater event yeah in in my case the uh, buy a good movie and watch a good movie with colleen is even more entertaining than any any major event yeah well congratulations with the wedding anniversary and best wishes to colleen and to you and have a wonderful yes. time Mark. all right thanks bye-bye